What's going on growers? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. It's May 8th today and the garden has now taken on the full forest effect. Seven or eight years ago this might have all been a lawn, but now it's a food forest. Let's go! Let's start today's video off right where I ended the intro. As you can see we've got some grapes trellised right up above us, right here. And it's nice so we can provide some shade in the summer, but then when it's also fruiting, we can reach out and grab some fruit. There we've got a Honeycrisp apple, relatively young, but still performing well. Next to me here, you'll notice, uh, I potted a lot of tomatoes. So I had so many tomatoes growing in the greenhouse that needed to be transplanted out, just didn't have the space in the garden. So I'm gonna be growing those in pots this year, trying to get that extra harvest. I think it'll be fun and I'll bring you all along for that. And you can see in the greenhouse, I transplanted the peppers into bigger pots as well. I'll give you guys a peek at that probably as the video progresses. And as we move more into the food forest, you can see why I call it a food forest because it's taking on that true forest feel and it's all food. Everything in here is production. Everything in here is there for a reason, all by design. That's what we call permaculture. You know, permaculture is basically just applying patterns to a landscape for a purpose, for a reason. So that's what we're doing. And someone asked Bill Mollison, they said, does permaculture work? And Bill said, do trees grow? And I thought that was just a profound answer. You can see uh, the peach tree that I brought you along for as we pruned it. Thing is just loaded with peaches, nice and high up top there, so they get a lot of sun, a lot of airflow. And I think that's important for production, at least in New Jersey, because we've got humid climates, or humid climate. And right here we've got gooseberry just loaded with fruit. We've got a couple different varieties here. This is uh, welcome, and to the right of me is a captivator. I'm going to show you now right here so that's performing nicely and the raspberries over here these raspberries I allowed them to grow in the ever bearing fashion you could either get one fall crop if you cut them all to the ground in the fall in the winter and the new ones will come up you'll get one fall crop or you could get the spring crop and the fall crop so we went for both these would be ever bearing and these are the I believe the yellow and raspberries beautiful color and delicious the oregano on the ground has just exploded. This one we've had for a number of years. So getting those perennial herbs in is just so nice. Uh, not having to plant them every year and also providing good habitat once it flowers for and uh, pollination for a lot of the bees and a lot of the insects. And we've got some dino kale growing right next to us here. We try to stick in any of the annuals and biennials and stuff anywhere we can underneath the fruit trees. And you can see we've got another grape. This is the Concord trellis right above us performing nicely. A comment that I often see reoccurring on the channel goes something along the lines of, James, I can't wait till I get my 10 acre property and do just what you're doing. What I would say to you is don't wait, not even another day, because the situation is never gonna be perfect. The stars aren't just gonna line up perfectly. You might not have that beautiful, flat 10 acre land or on a slight little slope, planting everything you want, just having at your fingertips. You know, that hasn't happened for me. I know that I almost didn't start years ago, but if I didn't, I, I would be upset with myself. You don't want to have that regret of not putting the effort forward. And I think gardening, it's like a muscle, like anything else. The more you do it, the better you're going to get out of it. So for instance, if you only have the space to plant one apple tree, that's good. Hone in on that one tree, learn how to plant it the best way, learn how to prune it, and learn how to watch over for it, and get a good feel of you know, some of the issues that could happen in your particular location. This way, when you get that dream property and you plant 10, 20, 30 apple trees, you'll know what to do. That'll be important. It'll save you time, money, and frustration. So whatever you want to grow, make sure you get out there and get planted. Right underneath the peach tree that we pruned together, I'm going to pan down a little bit. You'll see we've got the new apple tree from seed. You'll notice we've got some white, white kind of spray on it. What I did this year is I used some of the surround, which is just basically, it's just kaolin clay. It's an organic kind of spray, and it's supposed to keep some of the curculio off. So we're trying that out this year, seeing how it works for us. All organic, and it's just, it's just clay basically. We're just basically covering some of our fruit with clay to keep those, keep those bugs at bay from laying the eggs. You'll notice here we've got blackberry. This thing's starting to flower, and it's gonna have a lot of fruit on it this year. I know it will because of the way we pruned it which is important. So those are starting to open up. So the raspberries are coming, the blackberries, and the strawberries are coming heavy. Those will be our first ones to actually produce. So here's the apple tree we've had here for a number of years, and it just gets hit by the curculio pretty heavy. 
and that's a that's a pest it's a weevil and we're trying to coat some of the fruit like you'll see here to keep them off and uh, it reminds me actually of a quote by Theodore Roosevelt and it says uh, the best thing you could do is the right thing uh, the second best thing you could do is the wrong thing and and the worst thing you could do is nothing at all so even if you're trying something and it doesn't work out it's better than not trying at all so through the years we've had some issues with the curculio and this year we're going to try something out we're going to use this surround this spray i think it's going to do i think it's going to help us out a lot and i hope it can boost our harvest a little bit and typically people would be thinning some of these peaches because there's so many on here, but the curculia usually does that for us. So we're just gonna allow the fruit to set here and then if they get a little bigger, I'll come through and do a little thing if necessary. Here's another one of our peach trees. Pan out, show you that. Doing real well. An apple tree here, doing nicely as well. We got some good looking fruit in the center there. Nothing like eating fresh apples, fresh peaches from your own garden. Even fresh tomatoes, just nothing, nothing like it. The apricots are one of the trees that the curculia really go after so we sprayed those relatively heavily and I'll come out with another round and spray and this is my first year ever using the spray so I'm not so I'm not an expert on it but my neighbor has used it before and it's something you can actually eat you can eat the fruit you can spray the uh, clay on the fruit up to the day of harvest because that's all it is is just clay some more apricots over here doing well uh, fruits looking good looking healthy, love to see it. And underneath the trees, you can notice we have some weeds coming up. I need to wood chip here, but I also have a cool idea. I think I'm gonna add some, some different features to the food forest. It'll kind of give me another element of growth, go a little more vertical, and I'm gonna bring you guys along for that. I think it's a good idea, and I think it'll be fun to show you exactly what I'm thinking and have it come to life. Here we've got some apples, more apples, doing really well. And another peach tree. Here's a new cherry tree we added, just killing it, just looking beautiful. This is a gold cherry, and it has a number of cherries on it, which is encouraging to see, especially at such a young age. And then another, another peach tree right here above us, we sprayed that one too. So I think by spraying these and just coating them with the clay, that's really gonna help us uh, lock some of that fruit in, give us a bigger harvest. This way we can share it with more people. And underneath this, moon glow pear, this is what I love to see. This is food forestry in my opinion, covering this ground. Here you can see we've got this beautiful pear tree that again is performing excellently, loaded with fruit. Underneath it we've got some currants, almost like our bush layer. We've got the ground cover of strawberries and we've got some herbs coming up like cilantro and stuff. So one thing about a food forest is that it gives you gifts. Uh, cilantro, I haven't planted one, any cilantro this year, yet I have it coming up everywhere. So that's one of those things that we love to see. The gifts from the forest, nothing like it. I'll tell you what, when it comes to gardening, nothing is promised, nothing is guaranteed, which I think is a beautiful thing. That's why, you know, getting those harvests, grabbing the piece of fruit fresh, you know, picking that ripe tomato homegrown is so sweet. It's so rewarding because you know it's not guaranteed. It's not just plant a seed, get a harvest. It's plant a seed, guide it along, have things go well, support it, and then get that harvest. And some people will question, they'll say, why would you waste all that time and effort and even money uh, growing a tomato that you can get in the store for like a dollar or two? And if, in my opinion, if you're asking that question, then, then I can't even give you an answer because you just don't understand. You can't compare, in my opinion, a tomato you would get from the store for a dollar, two dollars, or I mean that fake tomato, whatever you want to call it, that thing in the store, it's nothing like the tomatoes that I grow here, or the tomatoes that probably that you grow at home, those organic, heirloom, fresh, juicy tomatoes. You can't compare the flavor, you can't compare the color, you can't compare the feeling. I would say, um, I mean, that's like saying, comparing uh, the water in a, a bird bath to like an ocean. I mean, they're both water, but it's completely different. You know, that ocean has so much value in it. It's got so much life in it. It just, just has more. That's what it's like to eat your own tomato. That's what it's like to grow your own garden. It's not just about the food. It's about the experience. It's about the growth. Not, not only the trees, but as a person. I mean, I got so much stuff I want to show you in this food forest, but the videos have been long, 20, 25 minutes. I think that might be too long for some of you, 
and if it, let me know down in the comments if you enjoy the longer videos but i know it could be almost daunting to click on a video and think oh man this is 25 minutes that's like the length of a tv show but if you're enjoying the videos hit the like button hit the subscribe button uh, share it with your friends ring the notification bell so these kind of weekly tour videos they're here to show you what it'd be like if you had your own garden it's not to tell you what to do it's to show you what i'm doing so you could learn from it so you could come up with some of your own ideas and get those juices flowing let me take you into the two-year-old food forest where some of the things are doing excellent we've got a lot of tomatoes in and the strawberries oh, i gotta show you the strawberries before we make our way out of this food forest this older food forest i just wanted to give you a pan shot show you what it looks like uh, to be sitting in here I'll tell you what, it, it feels like it's separate own kind of oasis. It's like a, a little getaway in the middle of suburbia. And I'm only on a third of an acre here and I'm not even using all of it for growing. So again, you don't need a lot of space in order to create your own little getaway. The tomatoes are doing relatively well. I planted them earlier than I ever have. Some of that was because I starred them so early. I've got Tuck next to me actually trying to scratch, get into the garden. Maybe I should let him in. So I keep him out when some of the stuff is young, but he still wants to come in and say hi sometimes. He loves being in the videos. Right, boy? He's a good guy. And again, the tomatoes are doing well. Everywhere you're seeing a red, you see a red cup, we have tomatoes. And soon I'll get those steaks up and in. I'm just uh, had to try to find the time to be able to get out there and harvest them. Actually, I actually want to show you a few of the brassicas over here, which are doing relatively well. Uh, as you can see right here, it looks like a cauliflower performing pretty nicely. Tuck's giving you a little comparison for size. Some endive, uh, some more kale and stuff. Then actually a blackberry back here, flowering, doing real well. And this one's going to have a lot of fruit on it too because we pruned this one the right way. We're focused on all those laterals. That's where we're going to get the most fruit. So tying back into what I said regarding uh, knowing how to plant things. You may only have the space to plant one blackberry, but don't wait, get it planted. Even if you can't bring it to your new property or wherever you wanna go next, plant it so you can learn how to grow best. This way you can get the most out of it. Now let's take a walk over into the new food forest where we have a lot of things growing and things are looking fantastic. As you can see, we've got some monster mushrooms in here, which is a great sign. That's what the wood chips do. They create an environment where you have high moisture content and this is what's gonna break down your wood chips. It's not gonna be the composting process, it's gonna be the funguses, the teeth of the forest. So a lot of you have mentioned I should put wine caps in. I got them one year and I just didn't, I just didn't have the uh, opportunity to get them in, but it's something I'd like to do. So my next round of wood chips coming uh, maybe this uh, later this spring or in the summer, I'm gonna order some of the King Strephorias and get those in the ground. This section here, which we designated for popping annuals, you can see some uh, uh, zucchini is coming up nicely. Spinach is performing well over here. We've got a number of different varieties. We've got giant noble spinach. I think we've got the Galilee spinach. We've got uh, perpetual spinach, which isn't really a spinach, but it's called perpetual spinach. And we've got some other ones here. Having some fresh eggs from the chickens and spinach, one of my favorite things. More tomatoes in here, just so many tomatoes. All the red cups are tomatoes. It's one of my favorite things to grow. One of my favorite things about living in New Jersey actually is taking advantage of those uh, Jersey tomatoes, nothing like it. The grapes that we pruned pretty heavily are performing nicely. Cucumbers are coming up. One thing that hasn't been great this year is the peas. And a lot of that is because we've just got the pests. I'm not sure what is eating them, but something's really going to town on them. And fortunately we were able to salvage some when we made those little fences. So uh, some of them are still performing nicely. They're doing better in the other food forest, but I don't wanna go back into there and show you that. This video could get very long. And you can see we've got a bunch of beans and stuff coming up. So these are all bush beans here. We'll have two rows of bush beans. Then I'll probably stick something in the center here. Maybe some peppers, which are setting up. But this is something I was super excited to show you. I brought a number of you along as we planted these strawberries just last year. Look at this row. Man, we're gonna be loaded with strawberries just from this one section. And they're already starting to form this Friday. I mean, just doing stellar, really excited about that. So that's the thing with gardening. When you plant a diversity of things, something's always gonna perform well. And then we've got a bunch of zucchini planted. 
underneath the fruit trees. That's a common theme. We'll add more zucchini in the old food forest too. Always plugging stuff in the spaces. Someone asked me where I got these trays from. I don't remember exactly where, but I think it was from a school. And they're just standard trays. This is what I put my, seed, my cups in for my seedlings. More tomatoes back here, performing nicely. And uh, we're looking to get our best harvest of tomatoes ever. We're always looking to improve every single year. New variety of strawberries is really coming up nicely, which is uh, encouraging to see. And more, even more tomatoes. And just think, this section is it's probably only about 50% planted. We still have peppers, eggplants, and a number of other stuff to add into. So this is gonna be loaded. We're taking advantage of all this open space. Because as you can see in the, in the older fruit forest, a lot of the trees have gotten big, which is by design. And, it's, and a lot of the other perennials have gotten large. So we've lost some of that annual space. That's why we've got the new food forest. We've got some places designated just for annuals. And around these young trees, we're gonna take advantage of the space. Here we've got the other strawberries, which are performing nice also. These look like they're gonna be loaded with fruit too. Nice having uh, several different varieties. Not only flowering at different times, you're getting harvest at different times, but also just uh, to have the variety of flavor. So some of these are getting pretty large, which is nice to see. And the blueberries, the new ones that we planted, are doing nicely. We've seen a lot of flowers on those. A bunch of blueberries on the side garden, which I might have to show you as well. And here is uh, more brassicas that we've got actually covered with this fencing. This is actually keeping away the, the groundhog, which has been eating a lot of our stuff too. And a nice small little peach tree that we just added. We've got that pruned nicely, which is gonna save us a lot of growth in the future. A lot more things down there, but I'm gonna have to wrap it up in this food forest. Maybe I'll just give you a, a quick little walk over. Here's a bush plum, roadside plum. We've got another one in the side garden. And over here, we've got more strawberries performing very nicely, as you can see, and some late season Aurora blueberries added as well. So one thing we're always doing is adding more, adding more, adding more. Before I take you over to the side guard, I wanted to show you the size of some of these, uh, some of these um, mushrooms. Look at this. These things are beautiful, massive. This one was huge yesterday. Doesn't look as big today, but look at the size of the base of that thing. That is just stupid big. I think it looks awesome. And more mushrooms over here. Again, you love to see it. The fruit trees and woody species love growing in a fungal dominated soil. So this is just what they like. That's why we're seeing this nice, beautiful growth on this Asian pear and a lot of the other young fruit trees. Again, I haven't watered these since I planted them last year. When I'm talking about my garden or food forest, I often like to refer to it as a system because that's what we have grown on right here. And this system, what we do and the changes we make is based on observation. This way it's gonna always basically work because if something is not performing well or we need to make some changes, we'll step in. So that's just a good concept in my opinion. That's what Bill Mollison talks about. When you have a system based on observation, it really can't fail because you're open to step in and make some changes. And oftentimes, like I talked about earlier, nature's gonna uh, open the door for you and give you these little gifts. Bring t connections to you that you couldn't even think of yourself, that you couldn't have imagined that'll work out for you. Let me take you over to the side garden, show you a few of the little things, and then we'll cut this video out, and I'll be back at you guys real soon. Over here at the side garden, this is one I love showing you all because I think it's relatable. I think it's something that a lot of you could have. This right here is the, we're on the north side of the house, so it gets a little bit of shade, but still, things are performing nicely. In the summer, the sun is straight above, so this all gets a good amount of sun, and we get nice production from it. Saskatoons have really started flowering heavy. Those are doing well. These blueberries are now fruiting, which is something we love to see. Hoping to get a lot of fruit off this one. And this apple that I've been excited about has so many apples on it. This is one I think I might have to thin. And I may spray that with some of the surround as well to make sure we lock in some of that harvest. But it looks like it almost has too much fruit for the young tree. Over here, you, you know we got strawberries planted. And you know it's a different variety too. Variety is the spice of life, especially with gardening. As you hear probably some of the cars going by me, that's what happens when we're in a suburban setting. But again, we've created our own little oasis. Here we've got the boysenberry and the tayberry. These are flowering heavily. They're about to start flowering. So 
berry time is on its way in full force. Nothing like it. I love the blueberries. I love the raspberries, the tay berries, the boysenberries. I mean, everything. Strawberries. You can't. Get, I can't get enough of it personally. This. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, blueberry isn't performing as well as some of the others. We'll take care of this one. We'll keep an eye on it. Make sure we get some good water and stuff. But right next to it, this one is just performing excellently. That's why I encourage a lot of you to just get a number of different varieties. This way you find out what works. And if you want to focus on that and plant more of them, then just go right ahead with that. I think it's a good concept and a good idea. Here we've got a later season gooseberry. So we'll be harvesting those. The ones on the side that I showed you earlier, we're getting those earlier, these later, spreading out the harvest. Uh, when it comes to growing everything, it's good to grow early season, mid and late. This way you're extending those harvest. Here's the wine sap apple, great performer for us. And as you can see, the fruit is it's set for basically everything. Uh, it's just a matter of guiding that fruit along, uh, helping it and stepping in when we need to. And it looks like some of these are still still flowering some of these blueberries because again you got to have the late later season ones and we're making sure we provide a nice little habitat a nice pollination some food for those bees because they're working hard for us always we want to support them because they're really supporting us here we've got the black cap raspberries these are going to be loaded i'm very happy that i came through and pruned them heavy last year i uh, opened up a lot of light to these because they were taking over the whole garden it's one thing about them they're invasive but for something to be invasive, I'm pretty happy with them because they are my probably my favorite tasting raspberry and so reliable and such heavy fruit sets. That's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you got some value out of it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gave you some different ideas. And I'd love it if you guys were down in the comment section, let me know what do you think about uh, how long I should make these videos. You know, are they still engaging when they're 20 minutes long. It's just tough for me to choose what to show you and what not to show because I do have a lot to show. I don't, I'm not sure if I want to break them into two part things. Maybe I'll do like a, two videos kind of a week of this rather than just the one. But again, your feedback in the comment section means, means the world to me and talk all your love and support. I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, for the majority, the large, large majority, all the comments are usually kind, they're encouraging, they're uplifting. So whenever me and Tuck feel like, uh, you know, we might have taken a little bit too much work on and it's just, it, it can get a little tiring, I guess, in a sense trying to keep up with everything and sometimes we feel like we don't do the best job of keeping up with everything but we still try and if we feel like you know we need a little motivation or something we hit those comments and we get a lot of that love and it means like I said it means a lot to us and your your kindness is felt I just want to let you know that and we read all the comments we don't always have the time to respond to every single one of them but they are felt and they are appreciated so if you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends. We've got some surprises coming up real soon, something to kind of give back to you guys. And I can't wait to share that with you all. It's almost ready, but I want to make sure it's perfect before I share it with you because I know you guys deserve the best. See you in the next one. James Prigioni and Talk, we out.